Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Fred and Friends. I'm your host, Fred Schultz. And tonight, uh, like I had last week, I have him on one more week this week, uh, Mr. Steve Davison, because uh, a lot of history wrapped up in that little guy, and I just love sitting and talking to him about it. Um, Steve and I, um, you know, we just worked really hard for paintball over the years, and, and uh, it's time that he gets some good recognition. But I've got to say hi, Mr. Paul Farrell and Mr. Tony Diaz. You know, what I'm going to do too here, guys, in the next few weeks, I'm going to start bringing some of these people on. Um, I want to hear their stories. I want to hear how Paul got started in paintball and, and what he thinks of paintball. And, you know, and, and the same thing with Tony Diaz. You know, I got to talk to Tony Diaz uh, the other night on the phone. And uh, what a great guy. You know, he was a police officer for seven years. Um, you know, I, I just want to have some of these guys on. Ryan Courtney, another one. Another one. You know, I, you know, you guys are, are watching right now. I want to bring some of you guys on the show. I, matter of fact, I think I'd like to have a show uh, starting with uh, you three guys right there. You know, um, I just think it would be very, very cool. And same way with Josh Estrada. You know, I mean... Not, I mean, I appreciate so much you guys watching. I, you know, I can't even begin to tell you that. But you know, I just think that you, uh, you take the time out of your life to to learn a little bit more about paintball, and uh, I just think that uh, I would like to learn a little bit more about you guys. And I'm sure my viewers, other than you guys, hear me mention you guys every week. So I'm sure everybody would like to know about you guys. So what I'm doing is I'm giving you guys an invitation. Uh, next week I'm little booked up, but maybe the week after I'm going to start setting some of you guys up. And um, I want you to come on my show and uh, talk paintball with me. You know, I love hearing the stories from guys, you know, uh, how they got started in paintball, what they, what they think of it now, you know, do they still play? What do they shoot? You know, where do they like going? What kind of game do they like? You know, it, it's just interesting as heck for me. It really, really is. And, you know, it not only makes a good show, it uh, it makes me feel really, really, really good because what happens then is other people that are out there are going to meet you guys. Remember, like I say at the end of my shows all the time, individually we can do a lot for paintball, but collectively we can do an awful lot for paintball. So the more you guys get to meet each other and interact with each other and, and help each other with the sport, I think the more the sport's going to grow. And it's going to grow in a positive manner. And that's, uh, that's always a big thing for me very much. So, so just throw that out there real quick. Um, I'm going to get Steve out here in a few minutes. I just have a few things. Uh, Mr. Jeff Thompson is watching up in Canada. Jeff is another guy I think is very, very good for paintball. I've had Jeff on the show a couple of times and I've got to play alongside Jeff. Yeah. Uh, he took and, uh, he guessed it on the band. And him and Martin came down uh, and him and Andy came down last year and played on another team, but they guessed it on the band the year before. Great player, great person, very, very good for paintball, period. I love pushing the, the people for paintball. Rick Wilcox, how you doing, my friend? Keith Kissel. Boy, I'm getting some great people on here tonight. Holy smokes. Let me give my shout outs. Not, not my shout outs. Let me give a few things that I've got coming up here uh, pretty quick so I can bring Steve Davison out. And then I'll give my shout outs as Steve and I are talking because Steve knows all these guys too. And uh, like I say, you know, uh, Steve and I have been around. We used to race dinosaurs, me and Stevie, you know. So uh, it was pretty good. You know, I, I had the pterodactyl. He had the big guy. So he always won. It sucked, but it is what it is. So anyhow, um, real quick, uh, next week I'm having... Andy Sturette from the Ellie Remember Foundation is going to come on. When we went to the World Cup uh, this year, we had a bunch of things to give away. Well, we didn't give it all away. And so um, Andy and I are going to do a show next week. And uh, we're going to give the rest of this stuff away. And there is some very, very cool things that he has to give away. Now, do I know how he's going to do it? Can't tell you. Uh, he just asked if we could do it on my show. And I am more than welcome to have Andy come on and do this. But I know we gave a lot, a lot of great things away down there at the World Cup, mostly to the kids. And that's probably a, a lot what will happen this time also. So Andy's going to be on next week with me, and we're going to give away a lot of real, real cool stuff. I mean, 
I mean, he's got some very, very high end gifts that uh, he's going to give away next week. So I hope you'll join us next week. Uh, and we'll have Andy Strip from the LA Remember Foundation. And we'll get this one knocked out of the park because we didn't get to give it all away while we were down at the World Cup. Gave a lot away, but not all of it. So we're going to have Andy on next week. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. Now, real quick, I want to mention, you know, we've got the WCPL tournament. Uh, first one coming up, the Southern California Classic. And it's coming up uh, next month, getting very, very close now. It's going to be uh, April 18th and 19th. And it's going to be uh, hosted down there by Glen Forrester at Ambush Paintball Park in Moore Park, California. And we've already got teams signed up now. You know, back in the day, I always wanted to play against any team that was good. You know, I mean, I, I I just, I wanted to play against the best all the time. Well, let me tell you, you guys come down to this tournament, you know, put, put 10 guys together and come down and play this darn thing. Because you're going to be playing against the All-Americans too, the Ironmen, the Master Blasters, Black Sunday, Hawaiian Heat. I mean, we're talking some powerhouse teams that are going to be at this tournament that are going to be down there rocking and rolling. So get on PB League and register your team and come on down to Moore Park, Southern California, the 18th and 19th of February. And Glenn and I'll show you a good time. Great field down there at Ambush Paintball. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. That's kicking off the WCPL season this year is going to be there. So um, you get a chance, like I say. You always want to say that you played against the best. You'd be playing against the All A Twos, the Ironmen, the Master Blasters, Black Sunday, Hawaiian Heat, and and other teams that are already signed up for it. So you get a chance, like I say, get on PBL leagues, sign your team up, and come hang out with us down there at Moore Park at Ambush Paintball down there in Moore Moore Park, California. I'm having a hard time with that. I get mixed up. It is what it is. So anyhow, um, and then a, a real quick thing I want to mention here is um, every year there is uh, Thomas D has a paintball extravaganza. Now this is where he gets. I mean, it's it's just like everything that's going on in paintball. Period. Yeah, you know. And this year it's going to be in Orlando. Last year it was in New York, uh, which is cool, but you know, a lot warmer. A lot of cool rides down there in Orlando. It's going to be down in Orlando, and it's going to be February 28th through the March 2nd. And um, it's a paintball extravaganza. And if you get a chance, you're going to want to go down and do that. Uh, just jump on uh, paintball extravaganza online, and it'll give you all the details. Uh, they got real, real great rates for a motel down there. Um, everything is very, very, very cool. And uh, you get a chance, you're going to want to jump down there and do that. Then, <clears throat> Ryan Courtney, I think you Fred, you have, well, Ryan, you know, Ryan just put something cool. You know, I I put it up there, but it probably embarrassed me. But Ryan Courtney is one of them guys also that, um, and Ryan, I want you on the show, please. I, I hate to have to drive to where you live to put you on, but uh, I want you on the show in a couple of weeks. I want you, Paul Farrell, and Tony Diaz. I want to bring you you three guys on and talk paintball with me. You know, you guys got history just like I got history. You know, you guys enjoy paintball just like I enjoy paintball. So let's all get together in a couple of weeks and talk. Now, I just threw it out there right now. Hey, Gumby, Stefan Santorsola, one of the greatest guys, him and his entire family. Um, he's a psycho clown, um, on and off the field, the way I understand it. Uh, his wife, Julie, is a terrific, terrific lady. And his sons, and I mean, his family is just paintball, period. When you talk about paintball families, there's a lot of good ones out there. I got to put him up there at the top five. Um, Stefan is a terrific, terrific person. And his wife, Julie, and his, his sons, they're just great, period. Um, so anyhow, real quick. This coming Thursday, a different time, I am going to be on with uh, Ruben Salter and Jacob Beaster on Teddy Talk. And it's going to be uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Pacific time. And uh, they invited me to come on their show and, and talk paintball. You know, gosh, do I like talking paintball? 
duh. It's like my tongue's tied in the middle and flaps on both ends. Yeah, I love talking paintball, man. I'm very, very cool. That's why I got Steve Davidson on tonight, so we could all talk paintball. I love it, man. So anyhow, um, that's the ticket. Uh, is, so if you guys get a chance, please tune in to Teddy Talk. at 7 o'clock on Thursday, 7 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Pacific time. And uh, somewhere in between that in the middle of the country. So anyhow, you know, you get a chance to tune in and check it out. Uh, these guys are are getting their podcast up and going. And uh, Ruben Salter and, and Jacob Beaster. And I am so, so very honored that they asked me to be on. And more than, than happy to help them get their podcast kicked off again and get it up and rolling. So if you get a chance, tune in, check it out, please. All right, everybody. Now, remember, Paul Farrell. Ryan Courtney, Tony Diaz. He invites out to you guys, not next week, but the week after. I want you guys on the show. Everybody, you know, I, hey, you guys, everybody that watches the show, you're going to want to hear these guys. Get a chance, bug them. Bug them so that they'll be on the show with me. I'd love to have these guys on. So without further ado, let me bring on my guest tonight. Please, everybody welcome Mr. Steve Davidson. What's going on, Steve? Howdy. Oh, great intro. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. And, uh, you're, you're all good. I, I didn't know like, where you were going to uh, go, so I just yeah, opened you know, yeah, I love it. I love it. And we got Mark Gong watching us, too. Uh, you ever watch yeah. his kids play? Junior? I, I, I give him in my shout-outs every week. Uh, Mark Gong Jr. and Shaden Gong. Man, these kids, I mean, they're like nine years old, ten years old. You imagine what they're going to be like when they're 15, 16? Oh, yeah. man. And if, if they're, they're just, into it, they have no fear. Oh, hey, but you know what? Your dad, you know, uh, between Mark and, and um, Michael Beard, they've taught these kids how to play. They've taken the time to actually yeah. go out and taught them how to play. But the, really the cool thing, Steve, is when these kids walk off the field, win, lose, or draw, attitude is very, very good. <clears throat> You know, yeah. uh, to me, it's such a big thing, man. I just uh, absolutely love it. I got a Facebook user, Paul Farrell. Sounds good. Okay, Paul. All right, we just got Paul nailed in. Paul's going to be on for sure. Now we got to get uh, Ryan Courtney and Tony Diaz. Oh, Tony says I'll be there. Okay. Cool. All right. So I got two out of three so far. So I guess I only got to bug one more guy. And we all know yeah. two out of three ain't bad. No, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Bond Chick's watching, too. I, you've never met Bond Chick, have you? No. God, God, if you get a chance, uh, friend her on, on on Facebook. What a great lady. I mean, okay. she's a kick in the pants. You would absolutely love her. Um, okay. You know, I just, uh, when I recommend somebody, believe me, I think they're top notch. Otherwise, I just don't say nothing about them. I'm like right. you are, you know. You push the good people, everybody else, you just kind of let it go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. So, well, you know, Steve, I brought you back on this week. Um, you know, usually I don't have a, a guest on two weeks in a row. But after our show last week, man, I've got to tell you, I had a lot of people. I mean, even phone calls, which kind of blew me away, wow. saying how much they enjoyed uh, listening to, to us talk about things. And and we didn't cover that much ground either. <laughs> we didn't. I, like I said, you and I could have a week show of 24 hours a day <laughs> and still probably couldn't cover it all. Yeah, yeah. So... But, you know, we're going to talk about a few things tonight. You know, I start out my my shout outs every week with Tim Schloss. You know, Tim Schloss, probably my my best friend in paintball. And uh, him and his wife, Terry, they, you know, what he did in the past with camouflage, you know, the, the, the tiger stripe tiger. camouflage. Yep. yep. And what he still does today, Steve, is just, uh, it's just great. I always you know, wanted he, one of those tuxedos that they had made up. You know, there was only 17 of those made. I know. Mine's hanging right behind this banner here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was there was 17 of them guys made. Kathy Alvarez is watching, too. How you doing, Kathy? So um, I, I hate to keep interrupting you, Stevie, but, I, you know, these people, no, you know, they mean right. a lot when they when they tune in. I got to say hi to them. Buddy. Sure. So, I mean, but without, yeah. without them, what's the point, right? But, yeah, you know, I mean, I'd still talk to you without them. I, I I enjoy talking Thank to you. you. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. We go we go back a few years, you know. Yes, we do. And yes, I don't know if do. you uh, caught my opening monologue, but you know, I said we used to raise dinosaurs. I said yes, I had I, a little di- yeah. yeah. Hey, problem with my donors, dinosaur had them little short legs. It kind of sucked, but you know, well, it you is know, what it is. It, yeah. <laughs> hop on uh, one yeah. of those velociraptors, it's a ride, let me tell you. <laughs> there you go. So anyhow, um, so Tim Schloss, he has Gateway Paintball in uh, St. Louis, and yeah. he has the last WCPL tournament that's going to be held um, in October. So if you get a yep. chance, you're going to want to go to Gateway Paintball, and uh, you want to go there and play that darn place before the tournament, too, because what a great setup he has, period. Yeah. So, and then then I got to say hi to, to Dan and John Colby. Now, last week, we talked a little bit about uh, what Dan did for... Uh, for me. Steve here, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it just blew me away when he did that. But you know, that's the kind of guy Dan Colby from Immortal Air really is. He's uh, he walks it like he talks it, Steve. Yes, he does. And Dan, Dan, and I, I can't even honestly remember when we first met, what event it was, or or what the circumstances were. But for some reason, we just really hit it off, and it's been, you know, pretty much constant throughout the years that he and I have been involved in what, like I had my paint fest tournament in 2000 and he came out and did all the air for the, for the tournament kind of a thing. So we've been, we've been bumping heads for a while. Yeah. He's uh, uh, you know, and he's done so much for paintball, you know, oh, when yeah. they, cause they, you know, they sponsored me for over 30 years here. It's, it's a long time. Yeah. And, you know, I used to go back to the, their factory that they had back there uh, when it was air America. Mm-hmm. And even then, people would call in for something, you know, uh, they go, oh, man, can I buy a, a, a gasket or this, you know, then he'd send them a whole spring pack, he'd send them everything they needed, you know, and just tell them to put it in. He was just an absolutely great, yeah, great he, guy. He, yes. You know, back then, he kept a live grenade on his office desk. I know that. Yeah. I told you <laughs> a story. I told you a story about the when I. I got hooked up with him because they sent me an air system. Jeff Promoter sent me an air system. Um, well, a marker with the, his air system on. Yeah. He goes, try this. He goes, this guy wants to sponsor you. Try this out. So I took it to a tournament up in um, Oregon. Mm-hmm. And we won the tournament. It, it worked perfect, right? So I call him up. I go, yeah, I'd like to be sponsored by you. He goes, well, let me fly you back here. I want to talk to you. And I said, okay. Mm-hmm. So I jump on a plane. I fly back there. And he picks me up and we're driving along. And. He, he goes, you want to see something really cool? I go, yeah, yeah. What's that, Danny? And he pulls his truck over and he gets out and he brings out, reaches under a seat. And it's got like a half a stick of dynamite. Yeah. And he takes and he, he lights it and throws it out in the street. I mean, this thing had a flash that was like 15 feet high, you know. <laughs> and now my jaw is sitting on the dashboard and like, you know, and yeah. I'm looking around because I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to get busted now for that, you know. And he goes, what do you think of that? And I go, yeah, it was pretty cool, but don't don't you think we should maybe go? He goes, well, I got more. And I go, no, no, Danny. I said, that's cool. I said, I got the idea. So we jump in his truck and take off. But it was funny, man. He, he cracks me up. But, yeah, yep. you know, they yep. still, he still takes care of everybody uh, with the mortal air now. His I'm son, sure. John, runs it a little bit more because uh, him and Steve Priscal. They have the um, Panhandle Paintball down in Florida, and now they're right. part of the MPPL, uh, MPPL, WCPL, and uh, they're going to be holding their tournament in April. So April first and second, yeah. That's correct. Absolutely right, my friend. Steve knows all this stuff, everybody, because Steve uh, has kind of taken over the reins from uh, Rick Rico Fernandez, which really, really helped get the WCPL off the ground. Uh, Yep. Rick did so much lead work, leg work, it wasn't even funny. And uh, never griped about it. He had a, guy, a gazillion people calling him. Hey, can you do it? Like you're getting out, Steve. You know, yeah. hey, can you do this? Can you take care of this? Can you put this in? So, you know, it's um, it's pretty cool. Steve's taken over the reins. But, you know, always a friend. Rick Rico Fernandez will yep. always be my friend. Love the guy. Great guy. Then I got to say hi to Budor real quick. Now, everybody knows about the Budster. Um, you know, great, great guy. Matter of fact, this is just one of my auto cockers I've got here. And that thing's beautiful. I've never even got to shoot this one. Wow. Yeah. So Bud, uh, he had an operation 
A few weeks ago, and so yeah. he's healing up real good right now. So, you know, I mean, uh, I think all our prayers really, really helped uh, an awful good. lot. And we got Andy Strett watching. Uh, Andy, I talked about the, the giveaway next week, and I told everybody um, to tune in because I, I don't know how you're going to handle it, but I know you're going to do it, and I am going to uh, just kick back and let you do what you got to do, brother. Andy Strett. You know Andy Strett, don't you, Steve? I'm not sure. I'm really bad with names and faces, and it's been a number of years since I've been floating around tournaments and whatnot. So, you yeah, know, I got you. Thing. Well, Andy, Andy um, has the Ellie Remember Foundation. Um, his stepdaughter um, was a victim of domestic violence. I'm, I'm going to let it go at that. And so Andy jumped in and put together a foundation. And what Andy does is Andy takes and he does, you know, all kinds of things for, for people, domestic, not just domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've seen him uh, get attorneys. I've seen him just do everything for other right. people that are in trouble. And what we did, Steve, um, this year is I went down to the World Cup with him and he had a bunch of stuff to give away. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. what we did is we walked around with the young guns and, stuff like that had a good time and gave a lot of stuff away but we didn't give everything away and i mean he's got some some high end <laughs> some high end gifts to give away so uh -huh. next week we're going to have a show and i'm going to kick back i'm going to let the guy run it you know i'm just going to sit here and look important and yeah right and uh let him do it but uh yeah i don't know hey, 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 he's going to give it away you know um I wish you could have seen the stuff that we gave away, Steve. You would have, it would have blown you away, man. He he got some very, very cool stuff to give away. So, Andy, I know you're watching. I mentioned it earlier. I just mentioned it again, and I'm looking forward to it, buddy. Andy Strett from the Ellie Remember Foundation. And if you guys ever want to donate to something um, that is pretty darn good, Ellie Remember Foundation, just jump online, check it out. Um, well worth it. Well, well worth it. Then I got to say hi to uh, Tom K. Tom K had uh, air gun designs back in the day. Everybody knows I love my mag. Rainy and Juvie Boucher, Paintball News. Very good friend of yours, Steve. Very good friend of mine. Um, yep. In fact, that's you where, and I were both. I, that's where I bought my wife was from, was from Paintball News. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. and I, uh, you and I were both editors for that. I, I was yep. the West Coast editor. You were. Uh, Sports editor. Sports editor, yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. You know, I did. Him, I did the him, first box scores for paintball. <laughs> yeah, you did a lot of first things for paintball. You know, people don't understand. You know, the NPPL uh, was something that was put together, but Steve gave me a call, and uh, Steve and I called the teams to get everybody together at a certain time. You know, and and bringing all the teams together in one place at that time was. Uh, like moving the Ringling Brothers Circus, you know, it was, uh, it was, not it easy. was difficult and, and people were discouraging the teams from attending. Yes, they were sponsors. You can see it. <laughs> That's yeah. right. it's history. It's ancient history <laughs> at this point. But yeah, no, I mean, it was the IPPA was saying that it wasn't, wasn't going to work. Uh, the, the sponsors of the tournaments were saying it wasn't going to work. Well, I'm not not just them. I mean, a lot of people, because, you know, they, they all had vested interest in what they had going before. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, but they, they didn't listen. <laughs> we, we asked them to change things and they didn't listen. So we had to do something. Right. And, you know, once all the teams, you know, once we got all the teams there and everybody came in agreement with everything, these were all the professional teams, period. And you know everybody wanted the professional teams there at that time too. So, I, I wanna I wanna point out a, a difference in in scale though. Um, for that first meeting, our call list of teams to try and get to the first meeting, who were targeted because they were perceived as being the traveling teams, the ones that went around the country and did the different tournament circuits. Right. On a regular basis, 24 to 28 teams with 15 to 20 players on each one. So you're talking 400, 500 people out of everybody in the entire world. 
uh, were the ones that were were doing this. Well, you you remember, Steve, when we would go to these tournaments, uh, which I got a couple of chances I'll pull up in a minute here. We go to these tournaments. I mean, we would wipe out all the rooms in the motel. We would have to get other motels. You know, I mean, yep. there was a lot of people attending these. You know, and, and you know, I'm going to mention Jim Lively in a minute here. You know, and yep. the Masters. Matter of fact. Here we go. See if I can hold this up right. World that's, Championship. Um, yep. Survival Games. Also. Yep. 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 1988. Uh, and Survival we were there. Games. Survival Games. That was still 15 man at that time. Yep. 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 So, yeah. In, I, in my opinion, still the best form of the game, but that's just me. You know what? I loved it. I, I came in 15 man and, and now we're back up to 10 man. And I love the 10 man stuff too. It's pretty yeah. cool. So um, the, the thing that I really, when I sat down and thought about it a lot, the thing that made 15 man kind of uh, a unique version, even though we have 10 and we had 12 for a while and we have 10 and seven and everything else is that on the size of the fields that we were using in the woods with 15 players, you could lose half of your guys and still be in the game. Absolutely. Yep. And, and, you know, it, it was just, uh, I don't know, you know, it was, it was a little tougher traveling with 15 guys because, you yeah, know, I mean. And that's why it went bye-bye was nobody could reliably get, or only a handful, a very small number of teams could reliably get 15 consistent players to do everything that needed to be done. That was a problem. Yeah, Mark Gong, let me, let me put this up there because Mark's such a good guy. I love this guy. Yeah, I see yeah. a 15-man format. Well, I. <laughs> Yeah. I don't, you know, hey, be honest with you, doing the 10th man format uh, it got a little rough, but you know, <laughs> I mean, look at it, look at the names of the teams, you know, back in the day, Steve, you know, I mean, when, when you heard that some of the big time teams are going to be at these tournaments, I would be biting at the bit to go play against these guys, mm -hmm. you know, I just, uh, you know, and the one that it's going to be the WCPL down in Southern California, um, down there at Ambush Paintball Park. You know, we got the all A twos from back east. Uh, the Iron Men are coming from up here. You got the, the Master Blasters, Blasters yeah. Black yeah. Sunday, Hawaiian Heat. You know, you guys are playing against teams that have been around a long, long time. You know, and you can you go down, you play against these guys, win, lose, or draw. You can always say, "I played against these guys." And if you pay Period. attention, no matter what the result, you're going to learn stuff. Yep, absolutely right. Hey, we got. James McGough watching me tonight, man. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> you know, Howdy's one of the best Chrono. I, I texted earlier to him, you know, I told him, I said, he's probably one of the best Chrono guys I've, I've ever met. Rick Wilcox does pretty good at it too, you know. Did you uh, ever hear, uh, Rick and you Howdy. hear Howdy's uh, initiation uh, experience of joining the Blasters? No, I missed that. Was well, it a good one? Yeah, the bla so the Blasters were for from It's Chuck a kid's Rogers. show, remember? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're <laughs> okay. from Survival New York. And uh, it's clean. It's clean. Nah, I'm uh, just messing uh, with you. Go ahead. Um, and uh, my team was from uh, Skirmish USA out in the Poconos. So we, we were close, and we were two teams in the area that were really being serious about tournament play. So we got together for practices and whatnot, and... Um, Jerry had put a, one of the first, if not the first, speedball courts up in uh, Paintball Sports New York. And we were screwing around, learning how to play on those. And a couple of the blasters, uh, your friend and mine, Kevin, and I think uh, one, of the, one of the brothers came over and said, listen, uh, we want you to help us initiate Howdy. And okay, what? Well, we're all on that 15 guys on his side. We're all on the speedball court. And you know how tiny those postage stamps are. Oh, yeah. And uh, we started the game. And all the blasters, except for Howdy, went underneath the netting at the back end of the field and left Howdy running down the middle of the field facing all 15 of us. <laughs> <laughs> and he got lit. <laughs> Just imagine that. <laughs> wow. That, well, that's a pretty good story, man. You know, I'd like to, I, I was actually thinking about, ooh, Caesar Pizzo was in the house too. Caesar, a good friend of mine. Uh, 
a great guy. I don't know if you know him or not, but he has ultra silk. Caesar, yeah, I know Caesar. Oh man, yeah, he does my markers. And let me tell you, it, they even sound different for some reason, but they, they everything is so smooth and so mm -hmm. fluid. Uh, and, and plus, he's a kick in the pants to hang around too. So, I taught him the X Factor. He knows about that. You got to get a hold of him. He'll tell you all about that. So. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but yeah Caesar is a great guy. You know, and like I say, we got Mark Gong. Look at the people that that are watching know, the show I'm right looking. now. Just they're terrific people. I mean, oh my God, great, great people. Really, really are. And then I got to mention real quick. Uh, well, Randy Camilla, APGs. Gave me my first cover shot. Um, I will be forever grateful for that because that that led to a lot. So and uh well, my I, first article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I wrote a few for them, but mostly I God, they just they did so many interviews with me and promoted all my stuff. And uh I think I got like uh four cover shots on APG. So yeah, they treated me very good. I, and then I, Jerry I, Braun. Oh, go ahead. And Jerry, no, that's good lead in because that's what I was going to mention. I switched from writing for APG to writing for um, Jerry's Paintball Sports International. And then the other ones, you know, Paintball News and PGI and PCRI and everything else. But um, right. I have well, you know, regular you... column in uh, Paintball Sports. That was the words of the master um, about tactical tricks and stuff like that on the field. And right. uh, that, you know, that a lot of things, Jerry did a lot of things, especially early on, that set a foundation for a lot of stuff that we're still benefiting from these days. He had the magazine. Uh, he had his field, which was one of the first fields in the country. One um, of the oldest. One of the oldest. He had yep. that uh, that indie tournament. You know, the, the thing at the time, early on in the sport, tournaments were the province of the National Survival Game. And uh, Jerry did an independent tournament, and uh, Jeff Perlmutter did one at, at Skirmish USA, uh, which broke things open for everybody playing tournaments. You did not, they proved that you did not have to go through the national survival game in order to host a successful paintball tournament. Right. Well, you know, Jerry, well, first of all, Jerry was a big part. Uh, when you when we first made all the calls and we got everybody together down there, uh, Jerry was actually our attorney for the MPPL. Yep. And uh, this is now I got a lot of patches, everybody. I mean, I've got literally <laughs> yeah, hundreds. Yeah. They're, they're all got, brand new too. Yeah. This right here is one of Jerry Braun's tournaments that he uh, sponsored. It was the uh, 1994 Dallas Open. I think he did the 93 Dallas Open too. Um, no, I that was, I, uh, that was uh, well, yeah, he, he hosted it, but it was yeah. run by the Texas Black Diamonds and Texas Storm. Storm, yeah, exactly right. But I, I think he had a, a part in it, though. Um, oh, yeah. Well, you know, at that tournament that you're holding the patch up for, <laughs> Jerry had a whole separate hotel room that he rented just to store the paint in, so it was in air conditioning. Hey, you know what? And I was there, too, and when I when, <laughs> when I went to get my paint, I got in line, right? And and there was like six people ahead of me. And, you know, back then, you know, everybody just, when I showed up, it's like they were amazed. So, and and they all turned around and go, oh my God, it's Fred Schultz. They go, well, you go to the front of the line. You go to the front of the line. I go, no, no, man. I said, I'm going to wait like everybody else does, you know? And Jerry's sitting in the room and he sticks his head out the room and he goes, oh my God, trouble's here now. You know, so I start teasing yeah. him about his height a little bit, you know. I go, stand yeah. up, Jerry. And I go, oh, I'm sorry, you are standing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I what I did is there was Jerry. like, yeah, yeah. There, there was six guys ahead of me getting the paint for their teams. So what I did is um, I, I didn't I didn't jump ahead. I never do that. I, I, I don't believe in that. And so I said, well, I'm going to stand in line. But I said, Jerry, I want you to give each one of these guys an extra case of paint on me. So I gave each one of those guys nice. that was in line a case of paint, you know. And, you know, Jerry loved it because he's making money with the paint. You yeah, know, so. <laughs> it, was, it was funny as hell because he had another hotel room for him. And yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't under his name, if you remember. No, nope. because he didn't. He did not like people being able to find him during the tournament. Yep. You know what? That's how I would when we would go to the tournaments. My hotel was always under Bart Hildebrand's name. <laughs> uh, yeah. Be yeah. Because otherwise, people would be knocking on my door twenty four seven. So I, 
we it started out okay, but we had to put the kibosh onto that. That didn't work so good. So and then here's another one. This is from '94. Yeah, that was uh, that was run by uh, John Amodea and um, the guy that I can't remember his his buddy um, who did the first uh, paintball extravaganza that Tom Gee is doing now. Yeah, Tom's Tom's doing a good job at that too. He really, really is. It's uh, going to be in Orlando this year. So I was thinking I know, about going I'm down there. To be able to drive up for at least a day. You going to drive up there? Yeah, because I'm, I'm thinking hoping. about. I'm thinking about flying down, but God, I got so much going on right now, you know. Remember this patch? Windy City Open. Yeah. Lively yep. tournament. Lively tournament right there. Out at, uh, out at Rennick Miller's field. Yep. And Rennick still has the same field. And I love that field because it was one of the first places where we actually got to stand on the sidelines and watch a game in the woods because he had put that huge netting wall. Right, all along the side all of the way across. Fields. Yep, he had that door bunker. Do you remember the window bunker? Do you remember that one? That was at the first Chicago NPPL tournament. Ah, you know, tall, I don't remember all the bunkers. Tall bunker, uh, yeah. with a with a plexiglass window in it, and everybody is like, "Oh, you can just get somebody in there, and they can step up on a little step and be totally protected and observe the entire field." And get the headshot out of them. We didn't say anything about that, but the first thing that happened every game was right on the window. Yep. Yep. Mark Mark Gong Mark Gong brought up a thing here. Uh, this was at the DC Cup, the one that I just held up here. It's in constant pursuit beat the the top three teams at the DC Cup, beat the Ironman, beat the All Americans, and we beat Aftershock. Mark, yep. you've got such a memory, man. Holy smokes. For you know, such an old guy. <laughs> that that tournament made me very, very happy because, first of all, I helped uh, set up that event um, to a minor degree. and uh, But halfway through the first day of the tournament, I got Bob Long and uh, Adam Gardner and a bunch of other people from the major teams coming over to me and saying, uh, Steve, um, how does this field play? Where's the where's the spots on this field? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell you all how to beat my team and everybody else. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you, you know, when we used to do the tournaments back in the day, we'd fly in three days before the tournament. And walk and, and walk, walk and run them. We, would, we yep. would take half our team and half our team at each flag station and we'd yep. run the spots to see how far we could make well, it. It was... Uh, you know, a lot we, of time in that, baby. If, if you remember when uh, the, the first day of the NPPL meeting, the first meeting was a big to do of getting everybody to actually agree that we could talk to each other without ripping each other's throats out. That's right. That's right. And that was the first day. And the second day, we focused on what do we need to do in order to put a league together. And then the third day, uh, well, the first half of the second day, and the, the second half, everybody in their little groups that were assigned to do different kinds of certain tasks, things, yep. Uh, yep. went off and did it. And then on the third day, everybody delivered their reports and we put the whole thing together. But um, I lost my point. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're doing good. Well, you know, the, we we did a lot there because, you know, I, in my group, I had uh, uh, Rainy Boucher because Rainy and I actually came up with the NPPL. We, you yeah. know, we were we were batting it around a million different ways. And finally, I says, how about the National Professional Paintball League? And I remember Rainy looking at me and start laughing. He goes, Fred, that's nipple. And yeah, yeah. And we, I remember that. We all started cracking up and I'm going, then that's what it's going to be, nipple. And that, yeah. it's stuck and it is. And Neb Nilla, you know, he's up in Canada and he still runs an NPPL page, just yeah. like the original. And I still oh. have all cards i was uh the official spokesman for the mppl i still have all my cards that they made for me and stuff wow i mean so much history steve it's just unbelievable it really really is you know and uh we all called it that yeah <laughs> yeah that, was, that's uh, uh yeah we, had, we, had, the, we had the nipple and we had the the pantyhose discussion do you remember that no nah, i missed i missed that i 
I um, probably was we there doing, but forgot it. We were doing uniform rules because some of us were sick and tired of everybody wearing, you know, 16 different layers of clothing underneath their uniforms. Yes, padding. Yep. And we we uh, settled on uh, two layers. Had to be a long sleeve shirt. Uh, had to uh, be uh, long pants. Uh, underwear appropriate to the weather, uh, and that was it. And then Bill Gardner raises his hand and says, um, okay, but uh, what about pantyhose? Yeah. I mean, just like that. What about pantyhose? And now you know who was sitting around that table, right? <laughs> it's it's yep. you and me and Kevin Donaldson and Jerry Braun and Rennick Miller and Jeff yep. Perlmutter. And um, I'm going to forget names, but. Yeah, uh, there was the, a lot of Bob Long, uh, Ed from the Terminators the, and the, Ed and from the, the Geese. The Fed. And uh, yeah, Jimmy he, Anderson. Yeah, Jim Anderson, all those people. Yep. And everybody's mouth just dropped open and turned and looked at Bill like, okay, so now we know something about the All Americans that we hadn't known before. <laughs> well, and Bill said, no, wait a second. <laughs> we we have a lot of ticks in Pennsylvania and the ticks can't get through the pantyhose. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, okay, that's but we so we settled on uh pantyhose were allowed as an additional layer so long as they didn't have sewn in cotton panties. That was yeah. the official clothing <laughs> rule. So let me ask you, Stevie, how many times did you wear them? Uh, never. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I, I would fight the ticks off. <laughs> yep. Well, we, but, you we, know, we'd get back to the hotel room afterwards and everybody would do their uh, getting uh, decompressing from the day of play. And we would do a, a formal tick check. You know, you'd pair off and everybody would inspect somebody's body to see if they had any of those damn We things. would do that after after every game, actually. Uh, yeah, we would we, check to see if they're we, on we there. We were from Jersey, so we figured, you know, we, we got 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, boy, some of the fields, man, they had tons of ticks uh, on them. Well, you know, you know, uh, you know Ray Gong, right? Uh, yeah, At of course. Top Gun Paintball in New Jersey yep. and whatnot. So his field for a while was adjacent, literally adjacent to the uh, Great Adventures um, Safari Park with the elephants and the zebras and the camels and the lions and everything. So when Great Adventure would go and de their property, all the ticks and the other insects would run from Great Adventure over onto the Top Gun field. You you could practically hear them dropping out of the trees onto the leaves. There were so damn many of them. Well, we would we would spray ourselves so much when we would play yeah. those fields. I mean, you smell like the bug infected. You could see it just fuming yeah, off you. Yeah, you know, yeah. we'd spray it because we would bring out. We would use a can of guy per day when we would go out there. We'd just yeah. spray everything. Everybody in it. Absolutely. Oh, it just froze I, up, Steve. Now oh, there you go. I, I froze for a while. So did you. So it's okay. Okay. Well we're we're back up and running. But yeah, I remember that uh big time. Uh Jessica Cortez is watching us from Hawaii. Yeah, no bugs here, huh? You know, I don't know if yeah, I know. I don't know if you ever got to play. There was a field down in Southern California, and it had these big palmettos and stuff. The, yeah. the one with the um, the acid uh, um, uh, the caterpillar, the acid caterpillars. Did you play that one? No, I played. I played oh. at uh, a field that uh, Ron Kirkpatrick was. Um, oh, Kirkpatrick Ron, yeah, was, was running. Yeah. Um, now this was a different one. This uh, this is the first time that I played. Um, the uh guns never own and yep. uh yep man you know andy greenwald was the captain then mm -hmm. and and i come down there and this was 15 man pump back then too and yep. you know andy comes up to me before the game and he goes hey freddie he says uh you ever played this field and i said no he says well button up tight man he said because the caterpillars out there he said they spit acid on you and it'll <laughs> burn you right away right so we're all sitting there going, yeah, okay, all right, right on, Andy. So, you know, we go out and we play the game, and my co-captain after the game, not just him, but a couple guys, but he had it the worst. He came off, and the caterpillar had jumped on his neck, 
and the boil was already the size of a silver dollar and sticking up a wow. half inch. It was incredible stuff. And, you know, and we're playing that game, right? We're playing Navarone. And I run up, and it was real thick back then. I mean, this was some thick stuff. So I slide into this big bush that was caved over. It was like a little cave. So I get in it because Andy and the guys were right on the other side of it, right? And yeah. I'm sitting there, and I look down in this big old black king snake. It's, he, <laughs> yeah, he's about yeah. three feet from me, man. I just, I freeze, right? And I'm sitting there looking at the snake. He's looking at me. And I can hear Andy and Navarone. They're about maybe 20 feet away. And Andy's over there yelling, man, you know, get ready to push, get ready to push. You know, and I can't say a damn thing because I'm scared of this snake, man. He's going to yeah. jump me, right? So and he'll say, just sit there. And I sit there. Finally, the snake, he just goes back down and slithers back away, right? I'm yep. sweating like a butcher in my mouth, bro, <laughs> man, you know? <laughs> Well, I I like to say that I put my hand into just about every kind of woodland creature shit crawling around in the woods playing paintball. Oh, hey, we're down in Texas, you know, now that we're talking about armadillos. Books. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why I broke my leg in an armadillo hole. Yeah. Remember? I remember. Yep, yep. Yeah. I broke it in three places and played the last three games uh, of the finals. The guys carried me out there. I couldn't run. I just, they took me out there and put me yeah. behind the bunker. But I did all three games, man, you know, because after I broke it, I come back in and I go, God, I think I broke my leg. And back then, everybody, we had paramedics who were actually at the tournaments yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. And the paramedics come over and he goes, oh, my God, we got to cut your boot off. I go, no, 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 no. I said, I got to play these last three games. Right. And, you know, my wife's freaking out. She's going, are you crazy? I go, no, I got to do it, man. So the guys carried me out for the last three final games. And I played all three of them, too. And then after I'm done, they cut the boot off and my foot just exploded because yeah, I broke, yeah. broke my ankle and the bone up in three different places. Yeah, I'll never forget that. But what I want to tell you is I'm there and Jerry's, Jerry Braun's over there, right? And I'm walking. I, I just got done playing a game and I walk in and there's a bunch of people standing there around Jerry. And Jerry goes, hey, Fred. And he goes, come on over here. So I go over there and he, and he goes like this. He goes... He goes, have a seat. I want to talk to you. So there's this hill right there, right? About It's about waist high. So I sit down on it, right? And I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, man, I'm burning everywhere. That little shit had me sit on fire ants. Fire ant, man. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. They were all over me, man. I looked like the first man on the sun. You know, I'm up there hopping around well, like you know, that. You know Forrest Hatcher, protein off. product, right? What's that? He was Forrest Hatcher, protein product. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forrest was playing down at one of the World Cups in Florida, you know, out off of Old Town there. And I'm pretty sure that was the event. And he's looking for a place to go next. And he sees this nice, nice dirt mound. And it's like, that's the perfect spot. So he goes and books it and slides in. It was a fire ant mound that was <laughs> built up over a deadfall. Oh, man. Yeah. Let me tell you. Them little guys got my respect quick. And you know, the bad part was they were all over me. You know, I had everybody just oh. beating, the, beating the heck out of me, trying to get them off, man. Oh, and, and Jerry's over there just laughing his I'm butt sure. off, you know. <laughs> and I, I just kept looking over going, oh, it's coming, Jerry. It's coming. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good one. And Tony Diaz says he can confirm that. So yeah, Tony lives yeah. down there. Yeah, Tony lives down there in Texas. And boy, them fire ants, they well, are they small but too. deadly. They're bad in what? Florida, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, when I started my first field out here, because I had the first field anywhere around here, and Bob D'Elia still has it, the uh, paintball jungle up here. Mm -hmm. But when I first started that, there was all kinds of wasps in the ground. Yeah. You know, just wasp nests in the ground, not hanging up there, but in the ground. And, man, I got to tell you, I spent so much time going out after these swaths and we'd find them and we'd pour gas down in the, in the fields yeah oh. the trees getting encouraging the wildlife to leave yep yep let me tell you man hey here you go howdy you know, i gotta tell you you'd have a lot of stories too if we drag you out here buddy howdy says he loves all the old stories thanks for bringing back some great memories and times together <laughs> You know, I, I was talking to Steve in the green room ahead of time, you know, before we we started the show. And that was one thing I mentioned was I honestly wish there was some way that, that everybody that plays paintball today could experience 
what we got to experience as paintball was growing uh, from its infancy back in the day because uh, Steve, was it a special time or what? It was absolutely a special time. We were, as I mentioned earlier, we were making the whole thing up as we went along. <clears throat> and P anybody who had a good idea and an opportunity to run with it probably found a way to get it into the game because it was all completely new. Um, you know, in relation to the field stuff, I wanted to mention, and this is part of that learning experience, the rules used to have written in there that your field boundaries could not include barbed wire. Why? Because we played on fields whose boundaries were made out of barbed wire and people got hung up on it. Yep. <laughs> see, see, it's the same way with dog legs, you know. Yeah, you, yeah. you, 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 because you and I were talking about this earlier. You know, you say dog leg now, and people are going to go, What? What are you talking about? Back in the day, a field would go this way and then go over this way, and it was what they call a dog like an leg, L. like, like an, an L. L, exactly. Well, you could not shoot over the dog leg, so it, it was hard sometimes because you could just see the other team and you could get such a good shot at them, but you could not shoot. You had to go up to where the L turned and went before you could shoot them. So, or, or, or you could have a guy at the corner who was shooting in their direction and somebody shooting over the tape actually eliminating them. Yeah. Wow. We won't bring that up because uh, <laughs> yeah, we know a few teams that did some of that, huh? Um, and, well, look, half the history of this game is figuring out, at least in the tournament end of things, is what figuring out what people should be allowed to get away with and what they shouldn't be allowed to get away with. Oh, yeah. That's where all of our rules come from. It does. But, you know, back in the day, you know, they, we we used to have a good time, too. I mean, you know, we yeah. would we would get excited for the paintball thing, but just to hang around with your buddies. And we went to Nashville one time. I can tell you a gazillion stories, but this is a pretty good one. We go to Nashville, right? And I, I you know, everywhere I went, I always got the white town car with the red interior. That was my mm -hmm. status symbol. That's what I rented no matter where I was at. Okay. So so I take and uh, I go ahead and, and I got it. And I've got my mom and my mother-in-law with me. And my, my daughter, my wife, and Bart Hildebrand, my co-captain, they're riding with me. Well, part of our team, six guys of our team, they come pulling up alongside of us in the station wagon. So they egg us, right? And then they take off. I go, oh, gosh, bless it. So we pull into a store. My co-captain goes in and buys two dozen eggs and comes back out, right? So now we're looking for them. So we see the station wagon, and we're chasing them, right? Well, they came up to a stoplight. They couldn't get away, and we egged the heck out of them. So then we take off, and we go to the motel. Well, these guys had the station wagon, and after we egged the back of the car and the side of it, they couldn't see out the back window, so they put the back window of the station wagon down where all their equipment was, and then went through a drive-through car wash. Oh, God. All their stuff got soaked. It went through out there drying their clothes out, all their markers, just That's everything terrible. was soaking wet. <laughs> oh, well, you I, know, shenanigans went on all the time. We had all of our uh -huh. boots stolen by the uh bart stud squad when we oh were yeah them in the poconos at three o'clock in the morning they were all still out drinking and they stopped by our ski chalet and all of our boots from the day before were soaked and muddy so they were outside drying off and they took them and hit them all over the complex we spent the first hour of the morning running around looking for our boots well, that's that's Bart's all right. You know, got Bart came and played. He, Bart's a band member, so Bart plays with the band. They came mm -hmm. down, but you know, that was funny that you mentioned that because when I I was over in uh, England, I I took and ref uh, the Mayhem tournament over there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and it was Bart Stud Squad and the Predators came to the the very last two teams to play for the championship, and I was the head ref. And everybody's coming up to me going, oh, Freddie, you got to be careful. These guys will fist fight each other, man. Right. Yeah. And I told him before, I says, you know what, guys? I says, if you guys even yell at the other team, I says, I'm going to pull you. And they're all, yes, sir. And it was one of the cleanest games out there. Yeah. But you would walk by Bart Stud Squad where they were uh, set up, you know, and they would have all their girlfriends there. They would have rock and roll music. The girls would be out there dancing while the guys are working on their markers and stuff like that. It was an absolute crack up to watch yeah. these guys. I, I, and you know what? And to reconnect with them now has just been uh, 
just a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I've known these guys for years and still having a great, great time with them. They still owe me a hat. Oh, do they? Yeah. I got one here someplace. I, I'll, I'll get a, who does, Bart or, or Marcus? Uh, the whole team owes me a werewolf hat. Oh, okay. I I will, uh, they will probably won't give it to you, but I will definitely no, mention no, it to no. them. No, 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 they burned it right in front of me. <laughs> They were not. They were. They were not. Let's put it this way: they were not happy with my team's performance when we played against them. Yeah. Well, you know, um, it was it was pretty interesting playing them back in the day too. You it know, but the, uh, it was the first tournament that they attended in the U.S. was the one in the Poconos, the yeah. uh, the PBGI tournament. Yeah, I was there. Yep. And uh, we were, you know, uh, we hung out with uh, um, Paul Fogel from Skirmish who. Uh, hung yep. out with Jeff Perlmutter uh, uh, quite a bit, and right. so we would get stuff in from from Jeff and from uh, Paul and and a bunch of other people. And for months before that tournament, they're telling us, "Oh, you guys are going to get totally destroyed by them." I never saw anybody shoot so much paint before in my entire life. They're a really aggressive team. Blah 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 blah. blah. And we were like, "Okay, fine, let them run at us." <laughs> we, we 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 took we took psychological advantage of of them and their um ultra british patriotism at the time when we were <laughs> trash talking them on the field and it took them off their game it yeah. really did that's you know you can play that game too the psychology yeah, it, was, it, it you know it, and paintballs changed a lot too because you know when when we played the the lively tournament um we went against, which is now Aftershock, but it was the, uh, oh, gosh, what, no, not Scream, um, Lords of Discipline. Lords of Discipline, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah. One of my favorite and, teams. Yep, and it was 15 man, it was pump, you know, and these guys, back then you crawled a lot, yeah. you know, because, because of the, the, the brush and stuff like that, so, you know, that's where I, I really, when I played them guys, I think we took second or third in that tournament. Um, that was our very first uh, professional tournament ever. But, uh, yeah, they a lot of crawling back in. You don't see hardly any crawling, even in the woods now, because no. there's no real brush anymore. There's a lot and of bunkers. No, and there's no, there's no time. The games are so much shorter. You don't have time to set up a crawl. You it know, was I mean, 45 I mean, minutes back then. Yeah. And, yep. and, and, and you could set up a crawl, and you could have a guy crawl. Up. I've done 100-yard crawls. Yep, me too, woods. yep. Uh, and, um, and it's like, as long as you got a good couple of guys behind you, who are watching out for you using their codes and, and, uh, keep, keeping the heads on the other side down, you can do a lot of damage crawling. Yep. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, James says, uh, Lord's a wipe. Remember the Vaseline lip balm? Yes. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, I, you, they wore, this is where, again, this, yep. is where, uh, this is where the rule of the long sleeve shirts came from. Yep, because um, they'd be shoot bare, bare skin, and they would have Vaseline on them all over. And it was really easy to wipe it off, or the ball just skated right off the arm because it just slid off on the Vaseline. Yep. So, but, you know, personally, I, I never had a problem with the Lords of Discipline. They had a really bad reputation uh, early on, and um, my team never had anything but a straight-up game against them. So Yeah, I just like playing everybody. So I really, you know, to me it didn't matter. And, you know, they, a lot of them pushed the, uh, the envelope. I, and anybody on my team pushed the envelope, the they envelope. were gone, period. You're I, supposed I, I, to push the envelope, envelope, and then when you get caught, we write another rule. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we had our share of rules, huh? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what, Steve? I got to tell you, buddy, we just burned through that hour. I would like to do one thing before we close things Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Anything you want, my friend. Go. I would like to uh, mention once more the schedule for the WCPL coming up. Shoot. Um, we've got uh, Fred's event, um, as he mentioned earlier, February uh, 18th and 19th at uh, Ambush. Um, we have Southern, Cal Southern California uh, Classic. We have the uh, Panhandle Paintball Classic which is at uh, Colby's uh, uh, Panhandle Paintball Field in Florida. And Steve uh, April, Driscoll, yep. Yeah, Driscoll for uh, April 1st and 2nd. We have uh, 
Jerry and uh, and uh, Kevin's event uh, in New York at uh, Survival, New well, what used to be Survival New York, now Paintball Sports New York, uh, June 9th, 10th, and 11th, um, the New York Classic. I was asked online about why that one is three days. Uh, is there going to be a five-man or something like that? And no, um, it's just an extra day for t teams to come out and walk the fields and hang out if they want to. That's the, that's the extra day. Uh, we've got the um, Northern California Classic, which is, again, uh, your uh, event, uh, August 5th and 6th. Yep. Uh, and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the, uh, I missed the UK event. There's going to be a UK event this year. That's uh, July uh, 29th and 30th. Marcus Davis. <laughs> Marcus Davis. It's going to be uh, in England, and um, we'll have more details on that in a little bit. Uh, then your Northern California Classic, August, August 5th and 6th, and ending the season out at uh, Gateway, uh, the St. Louis Classic, October of 14th and 15th. Yep. Mark Long put on, what about Tour de Force changing an entire field at night? You know, <laughs> that, that's what's so good about having these people watch it, you know, because it's like having a huge memory bank oh. or a, a, a library of what happened back in the past. And everybody remembers bits and you. pieces. It's so cool. I love let me it. Tell you a funny, let me tell you a funny story about that. We're out, um, again, I, I don't remember which, but it was one of the NPPL events. And we're out walking the field. And uh, Aftershock is up ahead of us, also walking the same field. And I'm watching them, and they're doing funny stuff. They're, like, making knots and twigs and all kinds of different little things like that. So I said to a couple of my guys, I said, listen, um, we're going to go off the field, pretend we're finished walking. And I want you guys to keep on following them and see what they do. <clears throat> they were marking shooting lanes and shooting locations. So that if a player, one of the opposing players took up a particular position they were likely to take up, somebody on their team could line up on that mark that they had left, the bent twig or the little ribbon tied around it or whatever, I was just, I was just and have a perfect that. shot right at that guy. So we spent our next field walk back on that field, moving every single one of them. Yeah, I, I can't, I won't say the name of the team, but they used to put ribbons up in the trees, they, they would figure how they could take and just lay paint into a bunker oh, yep. without even seeing the guy as yep. long as they shot at that certain height where that ribbon was. In that particular angle, yep. yep. That's correct. Yep. Absolutely right. Yep. So, yeah, it, you know, a lot of stuff back in the day, man, oh, I got to yeah. tell you, oh, compared yeah. to now. So, <clears throat> wow. Well, I got to tell you, Steve, I, I can't thank you enough for coming back on again. Um, Thanks for having me again. Oh, I absolutely loved it. And, you know, I, I hope that our we had a, like 25 people watching us at one time. So I hope that they all enjoyed it, too, because I know I I just enjoyed the heck out of it. And, you know, like Mark Gong coming up with stuff and and yep, everybody yep. remembering, you know, Rick Wilcox remembering stuff back in the past. That's why I say it's like it's like a, a fun history lesson. It's like we're all sitting around the campfire just shooting the breeze. And yep. it, it just doesn't get no better than this. I absolutely love it, man. Really do. And Tony Diaz, buddy, you have a good evening. You're a good man. I'm looking forward to having you and Ryan Courtney and, and Paul on. This That's going to be another great show. Looking forward to it. So, Steve, I'm going to say goodbye to everybody. Um, goodbye, one more time, everybody. I want, I, I want for to... The, uh, for the comments. Yeah, I want to thank you one more time for coming on, Steve. It was... Uh, I, I could sit and talk to you for hours. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I probably will, but I'm going to have to have you back on the show again sometime because uh, I'll come back. Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Right here you go. That's Ryan. Ryan Courtney. Great, great show. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Well, Steve, again, thank you so much for coming on, brother. And guys, think about playing WCPL. It's great ball. It is. And. You know, if you, if, if you want to really, really keep expanding paintball, jump out and play this. And like I say, look at look at the one in Southern California. 
you, you go home and say, hey, man, I played the All-Age 2. I played against the Ironmen. I played yeah. against the Master Blasters. You know, how far back do these teams go, man? Come on. That's all. I mean, that's history. To say yeah. you played against these guys is, is awesome. It really, really is. So, Steve, yeah. thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. All right, everybody. Um, I appreciate so much you guys hanging in there and watching us tonight. Uh, I definitely, definitely enjoy having Steve on. He's a great, great guy. And I cannot ever say enough for all of you that, that were watching tonight. And yeah, that's right. Paintball wouldn't be where it is without Steve. Right on, Mark. So anyhow, um, guys, next week, please remember the Ellie Remember Foundation giveaway is next week. Uh, he's got a lot of terrific prizes. I'm hoping you're going to tune in and uh, let's see if we can't give some of this cool stuff out to a lot of you people, man, because uh, I love my viewers. Cut and dry. And remember, uh, just like tonight, you know, Mark Gong, Rick Wilcock, you know, all you guys tuning in with little bits and pieces. It makes everybody else that was watching the show that didn't know anything about what was going on. It gave them the insight into how cool it was, what happened, and what went on back in that day, you know. So I got to tell you guys, um, I, I just uh, absolutely love it. I really, really do. I appreciate so much you watch because, like I always say, individually, we do a lot for paintball. Collectively, we do an enormous amount for paintball so please till next tuesday evening seven o'clock pacific time oh one more thing this thursday at seven o'clock eastern time four o'clock pacific time please tune in to teddy talk the podcast teddy talk i am going to be on there with these guys i'm going to be on there with ruben salter and uh jacob easter so um i hope you guys will tune in and check that out so until now till next Tuesday evening, 7 o'clock Pacific time on Facebook on Flagpole Productions. Please, everybody, play hard, play safe, play fair. Get out there and play paintball. Till next week, you guys take it easy, all right?